Yeah, so the significance of Data Island, along with some of the other islands that we've been to, this just happens to be one of the ones we started at, was the exposure to the water and to the winds. So we know we had north to northeast winds or so at the strong points of Matthew as it came up along here. And this area, a lot of this area and to the east toward the ocean was in the western edge of the eye wall of Matthew as it came up. So some of the strongest winds of the storm occurred here along with some of the highest tide levels. Right now we're doing two things. Um, as we come out here, we're looking at what kind of wind damage did we have and also what kind of flood and flood levels. How high did the water get? That's why that survey equipment, that just basic surveying equipment, we're trying to get an eyeball estimate of how high that water got to create what you see around here, the, the damaged boats and docks and so forth. Right now, our initial thoughts for the level of water is really preliminary, um, but we're looking at somewhere in the four to six feet extra water, or what they call surge. Now, now that's not what we tell people. We tell people how much water is going to be above the ground level, but this, we're, right now we're measuring how much extra water was on top of the regular tide. And we're looking at somewhere around four to six feet, which brought the water all the way to just about the base of this marina building here. People absolutely get confused about storm surge and uh, even meteorologists. Uh, so that's why we try to make it simple. And so throughout Matthew, we were saying water above ground level or what we call inundation. So if we say four to six feet of inundation, that means that in general where you're standing, four to six feet of water will be above it, for example. Instead of you having to worry about, is that respect to mean sea level? Is that respect to mean lower, lower water? And so forth. It's just re respect to the ground elevation that you're at. I mean, that's a good question about how should we categorize hurricanes. We, we've detached storm surge from wind. So we no longer say that a Cat 1 does this, a Cat 2, and so forth, because they're not all the same. Depends what type of coastline you have, where you are, the shape, and all that. It's very, very important to know about storm surge. As you can see, this was a Category 1 hurricane, but produced some devastating water levels that did you know, massive damage here locally and throughout the whole coastline of the United States, actually, of the East Coast. So classifying the storm surge is what we're now doing. We're saying uh, we're putting out storm surge watches and warnings prelim uh, experimentally this year. Next year, we hope to be live with them so that you can have a storm surge watch or warning independent of the hurricane wind watch and warning. I think the most important thing is to learn a lesson from this storm that, that, you know, don't just focus on the center of the storm or the track or the category. This was, this is all about what the impacts, listen to the impacts that we try to tell people on our products when, when these hurricanes are approaching. Impacts meaning, you know, what we think the winds are going to do, what we think the water levels are going to do. Don't just focus on, oh, it's a category one storm, no big deal. Well, this was a category one storm lowest on the scale, and it was a pretty big deal for a lot of folks. Hurricanes are very unpredictable, or can be very unpredictable. Some are, uh, in some instances, better than others. But what you want to do is you want to base your, your decision off of, at some point you have to make a decision to move. Decision makers have to make a decision. That doesn't mean there isn't uncertainty in the forecast, but, and it may waver again, you may evacuate and the track may go away. But you always have to base your decision off of some point. And there's an uncertainty and be aware of that and prepare for the, the sort of reasonable worst case scenario, which is what emergency managers and decision makers are doing.